because I think this is the most elegant lakuska I've ever had in my life. This is a tandoori chicken tiki masala bun mi. So before you guys go, you gotta take a baijo shot. On this episode of Fung Bros Food, we're exploring the fusion of South Asian daisy foods and the Chinese cuisine. Bengali Chinese, Indo Chinese, Hakka Chinese, Gobi Manchurian. There's actually a lot of different names for it. But this is a fusion of East and West of the Himalayas. So first up, we start in Brooklyn with our friend Nak. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Bengali Chinese episode of Fung Bros Food. Of course, joining us today, we've got our Bengali correspondent, Nock. What's going on, guys? Nock, we're out in Bushwick in front of a spot called Monkey King. What are we doing here? I was lucky enough to put you guys onto the Indo-Chinese food. They call it Hakka food. It's not really Hakka food. Right. It's, you know, if you guys aren't hip, it's Chinese people went to India. Food fusion, you know what I'm saying? Indian people love that, it. That was Indo-Chinese food 1.0. 1.0. And it's something that a lot of people grew up eating. And this is kind of like not even 2.0. I think this is 3.0, you know? You know, my friends, Harvey and Munzee, Harvey's Chinese, Munzee's Bengali, came together, they put their cultures together, they put their backgrounds together. And now we got this new take, you know, not even Indo Chinese food, I'm gonna claim it, Bengali Chinese food. And we do Bengali not go. Chinese food. This is a very special restaurant, guys. We're gonna go talk to Harvey and Munzee, and we're gonna go eat a bunch of food and try this spot out, guys. I'm very excited. Let's check out Monkey King in Bushwick. All right, we're here with the owners, Harvey and Munzee. Why, why'd you call it the Monkey King? So we picked the Monkey King because our theme is to evoke a sense of nostalgia. And the story of the Monkey King is something that's popular in all parts of Asia. In Chinese culture, he's mm -hmm. Sun Wong Kong. In Indian culture, he's actually Hanuman, the god. And then in American world, he's Goku from Dragon Ball Z. The Monkey King is a rebel who goes on this journey. And we consider ourselves rebels going against the green, you know, disappointing our Asian families and kind of quitting our corporate jobs to follow our dreams. Aren't you guys opening up here at the Monkey King? You heard it, Bengali, Chinese, Chinese, Bengali fusion. Not we're looking at some fushka. This is traditional Bengali dish, but I've never seen it like this. I've never seen it like this. I think this is the most elegant looking fushka I've ever had in my life. So. Oh my gosh. And it's got like seasonal beans. Fushka is made up of a lot of beans, but you know, they it's can like swap chickpeas, them out. Chickpeas and potatoes usually. We got this. Yo, this is Semolina, dope. I feel like Semolina, right off the rip, this already shows what's different about it. Yeah. They got a flower in the fushka. Because I think a lot of the other food on the table generally looks a little bit more Chinese, but this one straight, right off the bat. This, is, this, this is, is the most traditional Bengali. Yo, what do we say in Bengali? Is it kaita jai? Kaita jai. Yeah. I see. I remember, man. I'll be saying it. Three to years, three years. Yeah, later, bro, David so does say that. When it, <laughs> I'll be I'll say it. Amen. <laughs> straight to the mata. Straight to the mata. All right, let's go. Mmm. Dude. Refreshing, nice off the back. Get yourself some elevated seasonal fushkas. All right, you guys, moving on to the proteins. Of course, I'm gonna go with the Hong Kong shrimp toast with the coconut dipping sauce. This looks really, really good. I know that I noticed the shrimp toast made a comeback in the sort of the elevated Asian is, fusion. Is it, is it a big Hong Kong thing? I Man, I wouldn't even say it's like that big in Hong Kong. I, said, I would put I feel it. I like think I've had it at Viet places like that. This, Viet shrimp would, toast. Yeah. This is actually not a dish that I grew up eating, but I've seen it at more and more restaurants in the past five years. So it's trendy and it's delicious. This is the shrimp toast here at the Monkey King. Oh, wow. Dude, I love this, man. There's like a good amount of coconut. It's very crispy. I mean, you can even hear it in the microphone. A lot of people are doing Mike's Hot Honey on just like a pepperoni slice with some jalapenos. This is straight on some halal, you know, that's cumin that's like, lamb ribs. That's the most New York thing ever, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like add Mike's Hot Honey to Let's the, to do the it. something. The cumin lamb rib. Yeah, I didn't even expect We are to no see stranger to this, Knock. I didn't expect to see this on the menu. The thing is, we use lamb ribs for biryani, you know mm. what I'm saying? Let's go for it. Cumin lamb ribs, halal. All right, next round, we've got the duck fat fried rice. You've got pot stickers. You've got the crispy garlic chicken. But all done, you know, their own Monkey King style. Crispy garlic fried chicken at the Monkey King. Crispy, sweet, garlicky. It tastes a lot like the wow. traditional Cantonese crispy garlic fried chicken, but it's even a little bit sweeter and got a little bit more heat to it. So. Yeah, I wasn't expecting the that. heat, honestly. All right, here we got chicken pot stickers, but with a cinnamon infused soy sauce. That's kind of the Bengali yeah, twist. Yeah, in to Bengali it. cuisine, cinnamon and uh, chicken go like you know hand in hand. There are a lot of cinnamon in our curries, chicken curries, stuff like that. You guys so, have oh, dumplings like this? And, and Not really. It's been it's been something that's been introduced recently with the momos and stuff like that, as Himalayan culture has been popular. Mmm. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know how I was gonna feel about the cinnamon infused soy sauce. It adds that little extra layer to it. It gives it a little pop. And for someone who grew up eating a lot of soy sauce, I'm like, ooh. It's like waking up from a dream, like, I feel like I had that, but you know what I mean? It's like such this vague, like, famili familiarity that I think I get from the cinnamon and the chicken coming together. Yo, from a dream. The cinnamon is tapping <laughs> into your <laughs> synapses. Yeah, it's yeah. making those, uh... <laughs> All right, duck fat fried rice. 
This is the special right here. Bengalis might be one of the few South Asian countries that eat duck like pretty regularly, hash, curry, and stuff mm. like that. I guess the Bengali world probably has a few more like, I guess East Asian or Southeast Asian influences because they're of the proximity more than like somebody from, for example, like Pakistan would have, right? So just when you think that a brown person doesn't eat that, maybe the maybe the Yo, Bengalis do. Oh. There's a lot of brown people, man. We be eating a lot of different yeah, things. Yeah, that's true, you. that's true. It's not just North Indians representing brown people, guys. <laughs> don't, hey, I don't, I, can, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can. Say that. I can, can say, say it, that. you can't say, say it. Say that. Say that. <laughs> All right, you guys, we're trying a very special Monkey King version of Cha Siu red roasted pork Ooh. right here. And interestingly, they've got this Gurung Chong, which is like a ginger scallion, a lot of times used for chicken. This is one of my favorite garnishes of all time, the Gurung Chong, Jong Chong, let's do it. Did you guys sous vide this meat or something? Like what's, it is so tender. You wanna miss it out? My girl. And it's delicious and it almost tastes like an in-between of almost like a pork chop and chashu put together. And it's just like incredible. Yeah, this man. is good. All right, next course we got some crab siu mai Whoa. and some Bengali battered mushrooms. Yeah, so these are more spice-wise Sichuan like fried mushrooms, Andrew, but I believe what is fried in chickpea batter? Chickpea batter, which is something that's pretty common in uh, South Asia, specifically Bengali cuisine. Uh, a lot of like our little fritters mm. and then like fried food, we'll use like a chickpea flour uh, oh. batter. To... So this is gonna oh, be like your non-seafood style of the, of the salt and pepper squid right here. Yo, this is dope. I have never seen a crab cake siu mai. This is the first First time in my life I'm ever having this. They are doing some things differently here. Crab cake siu mai. You guys don't play around. That is fully crab. I love how everything is like familiar enough, but it always has its own twist that I've never had before. That is the mark of something special. Last but not least, ending off Monkey King, we have a classic Cantonese dish. This is the beef chow fun, AKA the gong chow gong hall, and it has ribeye beef inside. Let's get yeah. it. Yeah. This is actually, I think, my favorite Chinese dish. Ooh. Of all time, yeah. Of all time. Of all time. And I, uh, you know, I'm the one that's always putting my parents on yeah. to things they and, haven't tried. And I feel like, first of all, shout out to Pad CU. I think Pad CU's root dish is actually gong chow gong hall. But I feel like Pad CU over the past 10 years was, was beating it. But people, reinventing this beef chow fun is gonna make it come mm. back. Well, I think a lot of people, they Surge don't back they, in the game. A lot of people don't put effort into beef chow fun, let's be honest. They let it be a little side dish. Noodles they, is real, yeah, not just, even dark. You just put it on the, the menu, but I can tell that this is cooked all the way through, man. And then you guys have your special house-made kind of like Sichuan chili oil. I'm so excited about this because you guys do sauces so well here. Everything from the cinnamon and few soy sauce down to this, down to the peanut sauce. It's incredible. Yeah. Ribeye beef chow fun. Oh, wow. wow. I love like the wok hay, right? That mm -hmm. the stir fry, like that smoky flavor you get from stir frying things, mm -hmm. right? Like that always is, I think that's the reason this is my favorite dish. Like when you get that flavor right, it just tastes so good, man. It tastes like without smoke, without charcoal, you still get that great smoke flavor. So before you guys go, you gotta take a baijo shot. It's not right to come to the Monkey King without a baijo shot. We like to say it's our Asian version of tequila shots at the Monkey King. The way you do it is you lock eyes, you say gambe, which is cheers in Chinese. Take the shot and then flip it upside down to show that it's neat. That means I don't wanna see a droplet come out. Oh, if I see okay. a droplet come out, then you might have to take another one. And these bad boys are one third of a shot and they're 65%. These are strong shots. No, I know. Hey, oh, I, I'm familiar with baijo. Hey, hey but, uh, you guys, I don't do it often. <laughs> to the Monkey King. Gambe. Gambe, Gambe. All right, you guys, we're still in Bushwick right now. You know, we just came from Indo Chinese 3.0, the future. Obviously, that was their own story, journey to the east. But where are we at now? Right in front of Indica House, we got to do a classic Indo Chinese food, you know what I'm saying? Once you try the futuristic stuff, it's good to have the appreciation for where it came from, the classic. Yo, so. I'm looking forward to some chicken lollipops. I'm looking forward to some Hakka noodles. Yo, Let's do it, man. Underrated cuisine, man. Let's go try it out. All right, you guys, we're looking at Indo-Chinese food, you know, the originator. This is the one that you'll find at uh, numerous Bengali-owned Indian restaurants, right? And, yep. and at Indian-owned Indian restaurants. So, so this is Indian food, but it's Chinese food, but it's but from- it's Indian, but it's- <laughs> It's Indian, but St it's Chinese. Started by Chinese people who moved to India, so, but and it was started by Hakka people. Hakka, that's why they call this Hakka yeah, food, so it's, right? That's Hakka and Cantonese people that moved from southern China to Calcutta specifically, and you know they brought their cuisines with them. Yo, uh, let's try the chicken lollipops. This is one of the most popular you gotta, dishes. You gotta get the sauce, man. But what's really interesting is that I don't know if the, like I don't eat this as a, a Chinese restaurant. I think the idea of frying chicken came from Chinese people. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, okay, okay. It was an idea to fry. All chicken. right, guys, chicken lollipop. So they kind of like loosen up the chicken 
chicken at the bottom of the drumstick, then push it up. Turn it up. It's good. Ooh. I always put Indo Chinese food on the same tier as like American Chinese food, you know? Yeah. It just hits like that greasy, fried, like flavor palette. Not, not, you know I mean? not, not too many layers of flavor, yeah. but you don't need it, yeah. right? Mm. And I think it plays that role in South Asia, you know what I mean? It's like the go to. Like, you know how like you could be in Wisconsin, right? And and it'll be like a Friday night and a nice white family of four. It's like, oh, what are we doing tonight? We're gonna hit the local Chinese buffet, you uh -huh. know? Same thing, you go somewhere in Mumbai, nice family of four. What are we doing tonight? Oh, we're gonna hit the Hakka, the Hakka spot and, and get a bunch that of That is you know? crazy that. Hakka immigrants created the same cultural positioning of the food in India, Calcutta, that it has in Wisconsin, Green Bay. I think <laughs> that is crazy. Dude, I think that is Chinese people's, like one of the greatest accomplishments, man. No matter where Chinese people have gone in the world, they've created that position for themselves in, in cuisine. You know, whether it's the Caribbean, I've had Jamaican Chinese right, food. Right, the, you know the jerk chicken lo mein yeah, and stuff like that. Mein, yeah. Anyways, guys, here we have Hakka shrimp noodles, guys. This is kind of like a shrimp chow mein, but it looks different. Obviously, it's like orangey, red. This is a different color. I, I, it also kind of looks like a cross between like yakisoba too. Yo, it's good. This, this is become so popular that if you go to like an Indian grocery store now, they make instant noodles of this, you know what I mean? Indian brands make instant noodles of these Hakka style noodles that, you know, because it's what kids want to eat after school, it's what like, you know, moms that don't want to cook what they, what they can make. Mm. It's like that, it's like that, it just plays the same role that I think Chinese wow. food plays in America for a lot of people. So what exactly is Hakka and what exactly is Indian about this recipe in your opinion? Like the spices, obviously I do, I do feel a little bit more spice obviously than the, than the Chinese version that might be a little bit lighter in flavor, more soy sauce. It doesn't it tastes fully Chinese, doesn't taste fully Indian. It really is is that mix. So the thing is like Indian people don't have stir frying is not a technique in Indian cuisine, you know what I'm saying? Right. Noodles exist in other formats, but not really in this style, right? So that is like what's really Chinese about it, the cooking techniques and the ingredients. But I think that the sauces, the spices, the turmeric, the chili pepper, the extra use of tomatoes, yeah. I think that all comes Yo, I'm not gonna lie guys, these Hakka noodles, these this is like some of the, one of the best ones I ever had. But last but not least, what do we got here? The black pepper chicken. This which is actually is a, is a real dish in, in Chinese American. Yeah, food. but this I don't think this looks like it. No, no. Look at these chilies, bro. Look at these chilies, man. This is this is definitely it for South Asians right here. Black pepper chicken, Hakka style. Mm. Oh, whoa, it's not thick. It's kind of like if you ever had a black pepper chicken dish at like one of the Chinese Express spots, except on top of it, it's got mad chilies. Yeah. Woo! It's like that really traditional, like Chinese American, like that fried battered chicken, mm. whatever sauce, orange chicken, lemon, lemon chicken, like that, that black pepper chicken, but it's just OD spicy. Straight up, straight cheese. up, this is China Express in Calcutta. I think it was so cool that our first spot, Monkey King, is actually second generation Chinese and Bengali and, you know, South Asian and East Asian coming together and meeting at this point where the two things are already developed in America and then they're making something new with a cool vibe. It's very high end. It, it, it's very modern and hip. And then you come down to here and this is like that old school fusion, the fusion that's probably been happening for more than a hundred years, right? Yeah. Where it's like the Chinese went to Calcutta and created, you know, these type of Hakka dishes, right? Because these are not dishes that you can actually find in China. Not exactly like this, right? Similar, but not the same. So I think that's so cool to just see two sides. You got the monkey gang and then you got Indica. And I think people don't really know how big of a role this cuisine plays in South Asia, because the word Hakka is like, well known, it's quintessential. Like you wouldn't expect people in India to know what hakka is, even if their idea of it might not be completely correct. Because right, of, right. Of I mean, to be honest, some Chinese people don't even know what a hakka is. So correct me if I'm wrong. If you're in at least that part of India or uh, Bangladesh and you see like a Chinese looking person, are people gonna guess that they're probably hakka? Actually, no, because in Northeast India, there's a lot of people that uh, look more Southeast Asian, and East Asian, and even in Bangladesh, there's people that are like ethically. Okay, so they're not like, not everybody, not every Chinese looking person is hakka. Or yeah. it's not a the community is like very tiny. You know okay. what I mean? It's like only a few families. Just the, the left food now. was the, the food, food impact was major. Yeah, much, yeah, because I know at every new fast casual like Indian spot that's opening up, especially if it's a chain from India, there's a spot called Honest over in the West Village. Yeah. Maybe we could go there, but they're also serving Indo Chinese food too. Because it's just part of the cuisine now. You know, it's created a, a lasting impression on, on the community. Let us know what you think of Bengali Chinese Chinese Bengali. You know, Indo Chinese 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 fusions in the comment section below. Huge shout out to Nock for joining us. Check out his stuff you can see it around nyc go you know video surveillance posts all around the city and uh until next time we out peace all right you guys next up on our street food crawl we are at honest and this is a south indian restaurant that's completely vegetarian andrew you are looking at a 15 dollars bahu bali sandwich that is really classical street food and you can't find this anywhere except on tiktok right now but it's come to america this is a dahu puri or a dahi puri so the thing is it's got potato in the middle so a lot of people are used to pani puri with the rose water this it's got potatoes in it
Oh my God. It's like a Indian taco ball. This is the uh, Bahubali. It's got the cheese on top. I've got a little bit of Indian ketchup on here. You can tell right here, that's straight from Mumbai. <laughs> Let's go. This is a very sweet veggie umami sandwich. They've got jam in it. They've got all types of veggies in it. And of course, you've got some curry chips on the side. Listen guys, this is like a veggie club sandwich. This is like a taco potato ball. Such a large portion of the population in India is vegetarian. So you already know they're gonna be packing the flavor in a way that a lot of vegetarian spots, they just don't have the reps and the experience to know how to do it. You guys, like I said, I only saw this food on TikTok before. Just don't see it in person and eat it in person. First off, we got our food here at Wok in the Clouds. Like we said, the in owner is from Punjab, but this is his version of Indo-Chinese food. This is a tandoori chicken tiki masala bun mi. There are definitely some bun mi elements with the mayo, the cucumber, a little bit of the cilantro. However, I would say overwhelmingly, it does taste like an Indo-Chinese dish inside of a bun mi. All right, here we go. This is uh, the Indian version of a Momo. I definitely can see how this appeals to the Indian market. Like we said, this is a tandoori Momo, which is sort of based off of Baozi originally. And uh, they got this dipping sauce in there. This is pretty good. I could totally see people, you know, outside of the Indian sphere enjoying this. Round two, we got the Ching Mai noodles. This does, this is based off of the Maggi noodles, which is very popular around Southeast Asia and even Europe because I believe the actual Maggi company is from Switzerland or something like that. But anyways, guys, it kind of looks like some version of a chow mein, something you can find at a Hong Kong cafe. So let's check it out, but it, it smells good. It's bursting with flavor. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Very peppery, cooked to perfection. Got a little bit of that wok hay. As far as this appealing to the Indian taste buds, I guess I would say that there is definitely a more spiciness, a little bit peppery kick, and also a lot of onions. But overall, there's definitely a little bit of curry powder in there. I like it. It's kind of like an instant noodle version of the Singaporean Mi Fun that you would get at like a Hong Kong cafe. So I think there is definitely some similarities, but overall, man, it's pretty good. Mm. Next up, we got garlic shrimp. Now this does look like uh, appearance wise, a lot of dishes I've seen before, but I gotta give it to him, man. The prawns are huge. There is in the Indo Chinese cuisine, tons of other kind of saucy dishes that you'd make over the wok. Like there's Gobi Manchurian. They also have their own like Sichuan, Szechuan style chicken that they serve. This kind of looks like if I had to guess a little bit more like a Thai restaurant dish, like a basil shrimp, but let's check it out, man. Hey, you know what? Thailand though, also part of the Indiosphere as in a lot of the cuisine has been influenced by India, so I'm not surprised that some of this might look like some Chinese Thai dishes. Mmm. Guys, this dish is pretty good, man. I can totally co-sign the garlic shrimp here. They're fat, huge prawns, super juicy, cooked to perfection. It does influence by the Hakka people, which maybe is not too far off than like, you know, from the Chiu Chow people or the Cantonese people that went to Thailand as well. So I guess what I'm saying is between a lot of Southeast Asian Chinese dishes and Southeast Asian influences, which may have came also partially from India as in curry powder, then, you know, I can kind of see this whole connection between all of this. I could see some the history in some of this. So I'm pretty excited. I think it was so cool to check out Walk in the Clouds. And honestly, man, I'm looking forward to trying more dishes. Sum it all up on this Daisy South Asian Chinese food crawl, guys. I just gotta say, man, there's a lot of flavors out there. There's been a lot of actually pre-existing dishes that you have not had. And that's what I love about New York City because so many different people are fusing it with Chinese food. But interestingly enough, this Indo-Chinese mix, it's not from New York City. This is from India. So uh, shout out to all the South Asian countries. You guys are putting your own flair on Chinese food and just Asian, other Asian food in general. I would love to see more. You guys let me know in the comments down below what you guys would like to see and if you've ever tried this dish but as these are fusions I'm going to do a fusion dish I'm gonna pour the garlic shrimp sauce which is delicious on to the Ching Mai noodles and this might just be one of the best things here Indo Chinese food man I think it's a hit